our research. Okay, <laughs> stop in progress. Uh, but first, um, I would like to introduce my own research. Give me a second, please, to share my screen. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, sorry because I prepared my presentation with slides in Spanish, but I will present in English. The title of my presentation is uh, Literature at Data, Reading the uh, National Literatures. In this presentation, I, I would like to present my own research. And at the same time, uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Daniel Carrillo Jara. I am from Peru. I am a PhD candidate at Purdue University. I am basically a Latin American literary studies scholar. And then I discovered a digital humanities three years ago. And now I am introducing digital humanities approaches, methodologies to my research. Uh, the purpose is to, to use digital humanities methodologies to explore, to study the representation and construction in general of uh, national literatures, not only Peruvian literature. I use uh, Peruvian literature only as an example that things that we can do in other areas or regions. I will divide my presentation in three topics. And basically I want to show what can uh, humanities scholars can do if they use the digital humanities approach. I will propose some questions, but the purpose is not to answer these questions. The purpose is to show that how using digital approaches let scholars to propose new approaches, new questions to the humanities uh, objects of humanities or maybe literary texts, literary objects. I will divide this presentation in three topics. First, I will talk about the creation of a digital archive. Uh, in the second point, or in the second part, I will talk about how to use literary data, okay, like, like data, literary data to create a sociological uh, approach. And finally, I will talk about how to explore the representation of Peruvian literature in digital media. First, uh, I will talk about the, the, the archives. Peru is a, is a country where there is not a lot of digital humanities uh, projects. It's like Peru is in the first step to develop a digital humanities uh, field or a digital humanities community. And of course, like in other countries, usually the first step is to create the digital archive because you need data to develop your research. And first you have to create this data and you have to uh, share the data. And for this reason, the first part of my project is the creation of a digital archive. Uh, I think I will, I will go to this part. In the digital archive, I ident identify 109 novels published between 1885 and 1921. This is an important period in Peruvian literature because this is the moment when intellectuals create the, the, the idea of a nation, of a Peruvian nation, and they try to create a sense of belonging. Probably they, they create a sense of belonging based only on uh, Spanish uh, literature. And for this reason, we try to, or I try to uh, recover, to preserve all these novels. In these 109 novels, only 51 are, are in public domain. This is important because in this kind of project, you only can share um, text in public domain because copyright, that's important. What novels we include in, in this archive, usually novels that are not uh, popular. I mean that usually, sorry. I mean, usually when in literary studies, literary studies only focus a specific writer. For example, in the Peruvian case, Abraham Valdelomar, uh, Clorinda Mato de Turner, Mercedes Cabello, 
I try to focus on other writers who are also important to the to literary studies, but usually they are overlooked. I try to include these novels, I try to include these writers. Uh, the purpose of the of the archive is first that digital preservation. And I would say it is the digital uh, re uh, to recover digitally these, these books, because usually you only have one edition, or usually they are, these books, they are, uh, they are not accessible for Peruvian scholars or Peruvian students. Uh, and another key point in the project is the open access. It means that you can download the novel, you can access the novel, you can download it, and you don't have to create an account you don't have to pay money to uh, access to the to the text that's extremely important for this project and the final key point is the context uh, we look for uh, we want to offer uh, contextualization of the novel we want to people who access the book to understand why this book is important i will show you very quickly the uh, the, the, the digital archive. Give me a second. Okay, share screen and it's here. This is the first version of the digital archive. Here you can see that this is that why this project is important, what is relevant. It's a little explanation. This is the explanation of our three of the components. This is the digital text, the introduction. It means that contextualization and the database. And here you can download the, the database. This is the introduction of the uh, database. And here you can download the database. And basically, it's an, now we have an Excel file with information of more than 100 Peruvian novels. I will show you very quickly the database that you can download. Again, it's open access, it's free. That's important uh, for our project because we want other scholars to use digital approaches to uh, to analyze Peruvian literature and for to achieve that we have to share our data this is the, the database you can download you can see that we have information of 100 more than 100 tam, 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 tam. okay here we have 109 okay Peruvian novels you have information, the writer, the title, the publisher, the place, the year, the um, a number of pages. Okay, and of course, we want to expand this, this database. And in some minutes, I will show you what we can do with this data, with this literary data. And of course, in the database, we have, what is the database? No, in the digital archive is here. Of course, we have the novel. Right now, we only have seven novels. Okay, we are going, for example, to Morbus Aureus, a novel by. Okay, this is Morbus Aureus. This is a novel by Angelica Palma, the Ricardo Palma's daughter. Here you have a little introduction, a description. Here you have the metadata. And here you have the novel. You can download the novel and you can download the contextualization. This is an introduction. It's like six, six or seven uh, pages. It's a paper that explains the importance of the novel. In the next, in the next month or in the next weeks, okay, this is our first update for this uh, by December 2021. We want to upload uh, three novels because we want to, uh, to have 10 novels in total in the archive for the end of this year. And, and this is important too, we want to include a plain text because when you offer only the PDF, you can read the novel because you can read the novel in PDF, but we want to offer that plain text because this is the file usually uh, digital scholars use to uh, analyze the text using Boolean tools or using Art Studio. For this reason, uh, by December, we are uploading uh, six novels in plain text. 
Uh, for next year, this is the second update that we are planning. Uh, we want to have 20 novels, uh, new, because they are uh, these new uh, 10 introductions. In total, we, we will have 16 introductions and 16 novels in plain text. It means that basically digital scholars can go to, the, to our archive, they can download the PDF if they want to read the novel, or they can download the plain text if they want to analyze the text using Boyan tools, Art Studio, or other kind of software. Um, this is that, and we can do this because we get funding from the Peruvian government uh, last year and this year too. Of course, we want to expand the focus of the archive. I would like to include novels not only from Peru, but from Ecuador and Bolivia, because these countries are usually overlooked or underrepresented in literary studies. But this is the future of the archive. Right now, we are only thinking in these two updates. The second part is what we can do with this archive. I mean, okay, we have the information, we can we have the ar archive, we have data. This is the this is the like the step to create a literary data science. It means science that use literary data or data from literature. For example, we have this data. This is the an Excel file, okay, with uh, year, gender, author, and the book, the title of the book. Uh, this is information that I get from my own archive or from the archive or my own research and from research uh, from other uh, scholars. And this is about uh, short story, novels and poetry. And for example, here you can you can see and this is a visualization of uh, of the like the evolution of Peruvian uh, literature from 1901 to 1921. And here you can see that for example, poetry is the most prominent popular gender in these years. It's in uh, the light blue, in light blue color. Something that for me is interesting, like a literary studies scholar, is the novel. You only have two, two moments, around uh, 1906 and around 1914, uh, 1916, when novels are more prominent than poetry. What happened at this moment? Why, in these two specific moments, novels uh, were more prominent than poetry? And uh, that's an interesting question. Again, this is not a presentation to answer this question. This is a presentation to show what we can do when we have literary data, when we transform our literary research into literary data to create this kind of visualization or this kind of, this kind of digital research. Of course, we only can understand this when we when we create this visualization, because only when 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 we have this visualization, we can see that these these two specific moments when a uh, novel were prominent. And at the same time, you can see that around 1921, we have an uh, increase uh, the, the the poetry, short story, and novels increases because this is the first centennial of our independence. We can do something similar if we think about places. Here I include places. I really like the Jihun uh, uh, presentation when the, he showed a map. I can imagine that I can do the same with this information. I can create a map to show where this gender were published around the world. You can see that about short story, we only have three places, Peru, Francia, France, and Spain. About novels, and this is for me interesting again, and we can ask some questions because we have that. It's like Peru and Spain, they publish the same number of novels. I think the difference is only five or four novels. We can ask why Spain uh, wanted to publish so many Peruvian novels. On the other hand, we have poetry, and poetry is like more diverse because about poetry, we have publications in Peru, France, Spain, Argentina, Puerto Rico, Guatemala, Ecuador, uh, Cuba, and we have different places around America, especially. And we can see that the second uh, country that published uh, Peruvian poetry was not Spain, was 
uh, France. Again, the question is why Spain wanted to publish so many Peruvian novels and not publish uh, Peruvian poetry? I think that, that's a, 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 an interesting question. Again, I don't want to answer these questions. I think that I have to research more to answer these questions. But only when we use this literary data, we can understand the literary field in another way using the digital approaches. Uh, this is another example about how to use literary data. This is an exploration and research about the, uh, about the construction of the Peruvian literature in four histories, written histories from 1905 to 1918. And something that for me is challenging is to understand how at this moment the Peruvian scholars, Peruvian intellectuals use more uh, examples from another country. Here you can see the difference between uh, Peruvian writers in this included in this history. Peruvian writers are in sky blue, and the other color is uh, writers from another country. And here you can see that usually you have more writers from another country than Peruvian writers. It means that basically these scholars are using models literary and political models from another country to create a national literature. And of course, that's a contradiction because if you want to create a national literature, you try to use uh, Peruvian models. You try to use your own writers. But at this moment, at the beginning of 20th century, these writers use, uh, these intellectuals use models from another country, especially of course, and you can imagine the country, especially from Spain. Spain is the most prominent country if we think about literary models. Here you can see the list of countries included in each, uh, in each history. And we can say that Spain is, is prominent. In the second place is uh, France, or France is in the second place. And something that again uh, is, is like good to know is that we have a difference here with Galvez, Jose Galvez, because in the case of Galvez, Spain is not the most prominent country. The most prominent country is Argentina. And why? We, we can try to give a sociological explanation because the other three critics, Rivaguero, Garcia Calderón, um, Javier Prado, they are from Lima, they are from the capital, but Jose Galvez is not from Lima. Jose Galvez is from a small town in the mountains. Tarma is the name. It means that he has a different sociological background. Maybe this is the, this is the reason why he prefers not Spain, he prefers a Latin American country, Argentina. Okay, this is some examples that how to use, uh, uh, how to analyze uh, literature using literary data. And another thing we can do is not, not, not use data from books, use data from digital media. Now, and you can, uh, you can see that how many times you use Wikipedia in the last week, probably more than once, because everyone uses Wikipedia now, not only the students, also the, the professor or the instructor. And Wikipedia is extremely important. In general, digital media, internet is important. And we can find now that uh, there is a representation of literature in digital media. And I try to explore the representation of Peruvian literature in Wikipedia. For example, uh, again, thinking about region, this is the, the number of writers according to the birthplace, the lugar de nacimiento, birthplace. And we can see that Lima has more than 50% of writers. It's like all the Peruvian literature is in Lima according to Wikipedia. Of course, there is an underrepresentation of other regions. And if you explore this, in the, the top three is Lima, Arequipa, La Libertad. And this top three is basically the most, uh, or the, the areas, the regions with more money, the more, uh, yeah, this is the more money and more population. Basically it means if you, if, you, if there is a region with more money, and with more population, probably they have more writers in Wikipedia. You can 
you can predict in that way. Regions with more money, regions with more population have more writers, have more representations in Wikipedia. And we can go on, and we, we can try to give another explanation about areas with zero writers. In white, this is the, the, the map of my country. At the end, I think uh, uh, Jihun and myself, we, we all, all use, uh, both of us uh, use maps, but of course my map is like not so complex <laughs> like uh, Jihun maps. But here in, in white, you can see that regions with zero writers, Tumbes, Amazonas, Ucayali, Madre de Dios. Here you can, you can see that Peru have coast, mountains in the middle, in the coast, mountains, and this part, Amazonas, Loreto, San Martin, Ucayali, Madre de Dios, they are the, the jungle, is the Amazonian area, is part of the uh, Amazonas. And um, basically, you can see that there is an underrepresentation of, of writers from the Amazonian, Amazonian area. Basically, if you are from if you are a writer from this area, from the from the jungle, probably you are not in Wikipedia. We have writers from the coast, writers from the highlands, from the mountains, not so much writers, not so many writers from the Amazonian area. Okay, again, you can predict that if you are a writer from the Amazonian area probably you are not good. This is an underrepresentation. I'm talking about uh, uh, gender. This is the, in Peru, basically, uh, the number of female and, and male population is 50-50, okay? 50% 50 of female population, 50% of male population. But when you go to Wikipedia and you try to explore uh, writers according to gender, you can see that female writers are only 18% of the total. Again, it's a, there is an underrepresentation because this is not real. There are more Peruvian writers, uh, but they are not in Wikipedia. They are not included in Wikipedia. This is a gender gap in Wikipedia. But I want to finish uh, with good news. Uh, this is, a, this is a Wikipedia in time. Okay, the, the first Peruvian writer in Wikipedia appeared in 2001. You can see in uh, light blue. The first female writer in Wikipedia appeared in 2003, okay? Four years, this is a, a gap of four years. And you can see that new writers each year, a lot of uh, male writers each year, but this is a, a good this is, this is good news. In the last two years is the first time that new articles about Peruvia or about uh, female writers are more than 50 percent, more than 50 percent of the total. It means that in the in the last year, more people are concerned is concerned about include new articles about female writers in Wikipedia. Maybe in the future we can predict that we will have like 50-50 in Wikipedia uh, in, in total. But now we, on, we only can say that new female writers are more than 50% of, of total, only new, not uh, each year. I am not talking about that total number of writers. And basically this is the, the end of my presentation. Again, I, I want to show how to explore uh, literature, national, the construction of national literature using digital approaches. Okay, uh, basically using literary data. You, I want to transform literary text, literary information, literary research into data to create this new kind of approach. Uh, that's all, thank you so much. Um, I think we have time to, to talk a little bit or to answer questions. Uh, Professor No, I think you want to ask a question, but you are mute. 